When we think about alien civilizations... Be honest, chat. How often do you think about alien civilizations in space? Be honest. Come on. You can do it. How many times a day do you think about this? I do a lot. Like three, four times a day. But there is another incredibly vast dimension that we might be giving too little thought to. Time. True. To be fair, man, like our planet has been around for millions of years, right? So within these millions of years, we could have even had identical civilization that looked just like humans, but were not humans, right? That either left the planet or just died out because it's such a long amount of time. Proof of that could have just dissipated in that amount of time. For the last hundreds of millions of years, other civilizations existed on Earth and that they or their artifacts are buried beneath our feet. As far as I know, there's no actual proof of this but also it can be that because of the amount of time that passed it's just physically impossible for there to be any proof like whatever might have been proof about it just simply disappeared right or maybe we just don't have the tools to find out that proof anatomically modern humans emerged around 300,000 years ago and probably lived in small groups of hunter-gatherers that's unbelievable when you think about it 300,000 years ago so like modern humans like the way that we think of humans you know with brains and smart evolved 300,000 years ago from our ancestors, right? I guess Australopithecus or whatever. And this is not just modern, modern humans like Homo sapiens sapiens. This is all of the human species. Because like 40,000 years ago, we still had Neanderthals, by the way. We still had a Homo floresiensis. We still had a lot of different uh, types of humans. And then eventually they all got stomped out and uh, Homo sapiens became the ultimate one and uh, the one that we are today. Homo sapiens sapiens. That's the official de designation, if I'm not mistaken. But 300,000 years is like a blip in the amount of time that Earth has existed for. We could say that our 300,000 year long history has three phases. We were hunter-gatherers for 97%, farmers for 2.9%, and industrialists for 0.1% of our history. And that's really fascinating when you think about it, because most of our written history and most of our history as a civilization, we were farmers, hunter-gatherers, farmers. All of this tech, all of this big boom of science that we've had is just in the past couple hundred years. Okay, maybe you want to say past couple of thousand years if we include all the... Roman Empire, Egyptians, and so on. But like I'm talking about proper scientific researches and proper scientific advances, let's say past 300 years, right? That's like nothing. It makes you wonder, how is our brain coping with this and our body coping with this? Because we were adapting to a specific type of life for 300,000 years. And then all of a sudden, we have to adapt to a completely new type of life for the past 300 years. That's like a few generations, what, 10 generations or something? We actually know that in the last few million years, there were hunter-gatherer aliens. Our ancestors, like Homo erectus, and cousins like the Neanderthals or Denisovans. That's not, I wouldn't call that aliens though. So first off, all of these Neanderthals, uh, Denisovans, and so on, these are, like he also said in the video, cousins. These are basically from the same genome as us, as humans, and we managed to procreate with them. So they're not really aliens when we had babies together. I would not call this aliens. Maybe he talks about this after. I'm curious to see. Let's see. They left fragments of their bodies, of weapons and tools, and even art. It's easy to think there have been others. Intelligent animals like us that could talk and use tools and fire that had culture and art. I'm sure this happened at least a couple of times during Earth's history. Like intelligent animals that could talk at least or that could have some sort of speech system between them or that had some sort of primitive type of dancing or cultural aspect to them. I'm 100% sure this must have happened a few times. Maybe got wiped out or something ha happened to them. The velociraptors, I heard or I read a while back that they presented signs of intelligence. But then again, what I read was from 10 years ago. And honestly, when it comes to dinosaurs, every year there's completely completely new changes to the theories because they're all theories basically it's still very very fresh everything we know about dinosaurs and a lot of the stuff is changing every freaking year take that with a grain of salt but what about fossils we only get a handful of good fossils so we might easily just miss fossils of such people but even if we had any we wouldn't necessarily be able to identify them as hunter gatherers that is very true even if we have uh, skeletons let's say or fossils of ancient people ancient civilizations it's very likely that we have no way of determining whether they had you know sapient behavior or any sort of society it's really almost impossible to figure out have you ever thought about the fact that maybe 
ancient civilizations could have existed in the oceans, could have been without any bones, some sort of squid or something of the sort. It's possible. Like dolphins are very smart, whales are very smart, and dolphins and whales, especially the orca, they have group behaviors, they have a language that they communicate with each other. Who knows? Maybe we had an ancient whale civilization on Earth. Over thousands of years, city-states became kingdoms and empires, some existing for millennia before they fell. Many of the buildings or monuments they constructed are still around. Speaking of the Colosseum here, because he showed the Colosseum, do you guys know why the Colosseum is missing half of the Colosseum? First off, people used a lot of the stone in the Colosseum to build their houses. But not only that, the Pope actually wanted to demolish the Colosseum at one point for a variety of reasons. Mostly it's because people used the stone from the Colosseum to build their houses. It was a good stone. Earthquake also uh, damaged it, but uh, it's not because of the earthquake. It was taken down piece by piece, mostly because of the people. The pyramids are piles of limestone so massive that they will probably be around for hundreds of thousands of years. We can expect way more fossils and artifacts to be detectable, maybe for a few million years before they vanish. But they will vanish. We do leave a lot of uh, fossils behind us, right? A lot of uh, evidence behind us. But the reality is, even with the pyramids and with our skeletons and everything, eventually it all is going to crumble and it's all going to be turned into dust. Like the pyramids eventually are going to turn into small hills. And because of erosion, you're not going to be able to realize, to tell that it was man-made or that it was made by anyone. And eventually, even later than that, a couple more million years later, it's going to be completely gone. It's going to be completely eroded in a few million years. Sadly, we don't have the tiniest amount of evidence for any such civilization. After a few million years at best, their achievements would have dissolved into nothing. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? In a few million years from now, once we're long gone, because let's face it, humanity is going to disappear at one point, whether it's in a hundred years, 10 years, or a hundred thousand years, it's still going to eventually disappear. Our only choice of surviving is literally finding other planets and being a multi-planetary species. Otherwise, bye-bye for us. In a couple of million years from now, once we're long gone, no one's going to know about us, chat. How does that make you feel? Imagine humans died out suddenly through a pandemic or cosmic rays or something like that what would remain for a few million years after our sudden end there would be clear hints of our existence we may already have left a mark in the geological record even with all of these signs of abuse maximum a hundred million years that's going to be gone everything whatever we built whatever impact we've had on the soil with our fracking and everything it's still going to be gone in a hundred million years because earth's going to still move around it's still going to rearrange itself it's still moving continuously all of that impact we had is going to Dissipate. If industrial societies stress the ecosystem enough to cause their own extinction, they won't be around that long. But if they become sustainable, their imprint on the geological record may be tiny. We may have little to no chance of ever knowing about them. That is a really good point. That is actually a really good point. Like in order for a society, in order for a civilization to have a chance of surviving for a longer time, let's say, they have to slip away from the dangerous chemicals and all that stuff that screws over the environment and go, as we call it, eco green, right? If they did that in the past, there would be virtually no proof of them ever existing right because it would be something that's akin to whatever was natural at the time maybe we are alone in this universe and always were the continuation of our civilization is not guaranteed and if we're not careful we may disappear forever let's hope that in a few million years there isn't another civilization studying our layer in the fossil record Oh, I'm pretty sure there will be. <laughs> That's pretty clear path that we're on right now. Pretty good trajectory that we're on right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You definitely should subscribe to uh, Kurgasat's awesome uh, channel. Probably one of my favorite channels on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, also uh, smash that like button and subscribe. Smash it. Why are you all smashing? Smash.